recordings, wherein Ranger is underwater at Anacapa Island. And we also have resources for education and youth on that page. Um, but before we get started, why don't we put a poll out there? Um, have you visited the Channel Islands? So, uh, Chris, could you put that poll up for us? And while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and tell you a little bit about myself. I've been with the Park Service for four years now. I've had the opportunity to work in interpretation and education with the parks. I have worked with Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area, which is here in Los Angeles area. And I've worked with um, Grant Coors Ranch National Historic Site, which is in Southwest Montana. You can see a picture at the top right there. Um, I'm at the chuck wagon around the campfire. I'm serving cowboy coffee to the visitors and, and telling them about the ranching history of the United States. Uh, at Santa Monica Mountains, you see in the bottom right there, I worked with the education department. We provided field trips for fourth grade students. And then the two left pictures are my time out on Santa Cruz Island. I spent three seasons with Channel Islands National Park, and now I'm a permanent park guide with the park. That time out on Santa Cruz really, um, it made me aware of why these islands um, have pulled people to them for thousands of years. Uh, they are a very special place and I do feel connected to them. And so we'd like to explore today and help you find your connection to this special place. Um, before we move on, do we have the results of the poll? Okay, I, didn't, I, I don't see it. We have lots of people that have visited. Sorry, yeah, we've got the vast majority of us have not been to a park yet, but we got about 10% of folks have visited Santa Cruz and a handful at Anacapa as well. Awesome, thank you, Chris. All right, so not surprising, uh, Santa Cruz and Anacapa are the most visited of the parks. All right, Channel Islands National Park was established in, on March 5th of 1980. It was established to protect the nationally significant resources of the islands. So this includes the natural, scenic, wildlife, marine, ecological, archeological, cultural, and scientific values of these islands. So it kind of covered everything there. There are eight islands that compose of the Channel Islands chain. Five of those are within the park. Anacapa Island, and Santa Barbara Island were designated as a national monument in 1938. And then in 1980, Santa Cruz Island, Santa Rosa Island, and San Miguel Island were added to those and they became the national park. But it wasn't just the islands themselves, but also one mile of water around each island. Um, now, if you see that darker blue line around all of the islands, and that's six nautical miles of, out from each of the islands, and that is a national marine sanctuary that was also established in 1980. Now you can visit our park headquarters in Ventura, California, in the Ventura Harbor. Uh, while you visit us there, you can uh, learn more about the natural and cultural history of the islands. You can watch our park film, tour our native plant garden, and also tour our visitor center and the displays inside there. Uh, now, of course, due to the current situation, the visitor center is closed at the moment. Um, so please watch our website for updates as to uh, when that will be opening again. All right, now we're going to visit um, our islands. We're gonna start with the southernmost island in our island chain and that is Santa Barbara Island. This island is 38 miles away from the mainland, and it is the smallest island of our islands, just over one square mile. Now this tiny island is a little bit deceptive from a distance, it looks a little bit barren, but if you examine it a little closer, you're gonna see a lot of different things, such as the elephant seals and sea lions, wildflowers, seabirds, um, and even an island night lizard, which uh, within the park it only lives on Santa Barbara Island. Uh, Santa Barbara Island also is a wonderful place to go diving and snorkeling. It has crystal clear waters to explore out there. 
Uh, currently, there are no trips um, out to Santa Barbara Island because um, the pier was washed out a few years ago. So that is on our to-do list that will be fixed eventually. All right, now we're gonna come closer to shore. Uh, the closest island to us here on the mainland, 19 miles offshore, is Anacapa Island. Now, Anacapa Island, um, the word Anacapa comes from a Chumash word that means mirage or illusion. And that's because Anacapa is actually three separate islets that are separated by water. And it does seem to change its shape and size depending on the weather. This island is about five miles long altogether, but the land itself is only about one square mile. Now, if you visit Anacapa Island, you'll come up to it and you'll see this iconic symbol of Channel Islands, which is Arch Rock. Now this is a volcanic island, so you'll see a lot of these natural bridges. You'll see uh, sea cliff, towering sea cliffs and also sea caves out on these islands. And after you climb the almost 150 stairs up to the top of Anacapa, you can explore the two mile trail system that winds through a forest of Coreopsis, uh, which have bright yellow flowers in the springtime. And if you really like Western gulls, um, you a great time to visit is right now, uh, the Western Gull Rookery is on Anacapa Island. Um, so you'll see thousands and thousands of Western gulls out there and their babies. Now the Channel Islands are vital habitat for seabirds and shorebirds, and this includes the California brown pelican, which you see here. Um, the islands provide essential nesting and feeding ground for 99% of the seabirds in Southern California, so it's a very important place to them. All right, now we're gonna get in our kayaks and paddle five miles to the west, and we're gonna come to Santa Cruz Island. Santa Cruz Island is the largest island in California at just over 96 square miles. The Santa Cruz Island does have two rugged mountain ranges that run east-west along the island and has a large central valley, uh, which is actually a fault system. The highest peaks of the Channel Islands are on Santa Cruz. The highest one is, is called Mount Diablo and it rises just over 2,400 feet tall. Now there are 77 miles of shoreline to explore on Santa Cruz Island. And when you're exploring them, you can explore tide pools, rocky beaches, and sea caves, uh, giant sea caves. This is painted cave pictured here. Uh, and I, I know it's hard to tell, but it is one of the largest sea caves in the world. And if you take a trip out with Island Packers, they can fit their boat right into there. That's how big it is. Now these islands have always been isolated from the mainland. They've never been connected. So that has created uh, many distinctive plants and animals that have adapted and evolved uh, to their unique environment. Um, and these, some of these are endemic. That means they only live in one place. I saw that the science class was studying that, so very good. Um, so some of those unique animals are the island fox, which is in the top left there. Um, that animal uh, evolves from the gray fox on the mainland, and it is about the size of a house cat, so it's smaller than that animal. The top right is the island scrub jay, which evolved from the mainland scrub jay. This animal has gotten bigger, and, that, and it also only lives on Santa Cruz Island. The island spotted skunk in the bottom left, those cuties, um, stinky but cute. Um, they actually haven't changed as much, but they have evolved. They are their own species. But because they haven't changed as much, we know that they haven't been on the islands as long as the others. And then the bottom right is the island deer mouse, and that guy got bigger than his ancestor. So these islands have created these special plants and animals. There's also um, eight plant species that are endemic to Santa Cruz Island. All right, when you visit Santa Cruz Island, you will start at uh, one of two places, either Scorpion Anchorage, which is pictured here, or Prisoner's Harbor. Now, Scorpion Anchorage is gonna look a little bit different than this next time you visit. It is closed currently because we are putting a new pier in. 
Uh, so when you visit there again, you'll see a whole different pier there. All right, now we're gonna paddle a little bit more northwest of Santa Cruz Island and we're gonna visit Santa Rosa Island. This is the second largest island in California at almost 83 square miles in size. Uh, this island has a relatively low profile with a high central mountain range that rises just over 1,500 feet high. Uh, the coastal areas are variable. They range from sandy beaches um, to sheer sea cliffs and also tide pools. And what you see pictured here is one of the rarest native pines in the United States. It's the Santa Rosa Island Torrey Pine. The Torrey Pine can only be found on Santa Rosa Island, and also uh, down by La Jolla, California in a state reserve. All right, you can hike on Santa Rosa Island, um, everything from steep canyons to former ranching grounds and open meadows. Uh, one of the most popular uh, hikes is Lobo Canyon. Lobo Canyon is geologically astounding. Uh, wind and water have sculpted the sandstone and siltstone bedrock uh, into intricate shapes. And with this photo here, you can see how windy it gets out there on these islands. Uh, all of the trees push to one direction there. And uh, so that wind and the weather does make it a little bit more difficult to get out to Santa Rosa and San Miguel, those uh, more, uh, those further out. All right, lastly, uh, the king of wind and pin of heads, San Miguel Island. Weather constantly sweeps across of the northern Pacific to batter the shores of San Miguel Island. All right, this extreme weather creates a harsh but also beautiful environment. This island is um, just about 15 square miles large, and it's primarily a plateau that stands about 500 feet in elevation. San Miguel is famous for its pinnipeds, that's those seals, sea lions, um, harbor seals, elephant seals. Um, this island has 27 miles of isolated coastline and it's very important habitat for these animals to haul out, breed, and pup and molt on. Now if you are camping out on San Miguel Island, I do recommend the, um, it is an all day hike, but it's a ranger guided 16 mile round trip hike that goes out to Point Bennett and you'll never forget seeing some of the world's most spectacular wildlife displays. All right, so now we have visited our islands and now we're gonna move over to exploring the recreational opportunities on Channel Islands. All right, our park is only accessible by boat or plane. Island Packers is our boating concessionaire. They do take landing trips to the islands, as well as wildlife cruises and whale watching excursions. Due to its remote location, you do need to have some advanced planning to visit. Uh, once you're on the island, there is no transportation available. Everything is by foot, private boat, or kayak. All right, camping on the islands can uh, really give you an opportunity to fully immerse yourself in the island environment. Camping is available year round on all five islands and established campgrounds. Uh, backcountry camping is available on Santa Cruz Island in the Del Norte campground and on Santa Rosa Island along certain beaches between August and December. When you're camping out on the islands, even the non-backcountry campsites are considered primitive and they all require a reservation on recreation.gov. So we recommend that you secure your transportation and your camping reservation at the same time. Now while you're camping, there are scavenging animals like ravens and island foxes. The ravens are very smart. They know how to unzip your bags and the foxes are also very wily. So you have to make sure you store all of your food and scented items and trash uh, in the, what we call fox boxes, same thing as a bear box, um, or a hard-sided container. Um, in addition for water, uh, water is available at Scorpion Anchorage on Santa Cruz and at Water Canyon on Santa Rosa. Any of the other campgrounds, you have to bring your own water. All right, crossing the channel gives you an opportunity to, to see the marine life of the park. Uh, you'll often see dolphins and sea lions, 
Um, you also have the opportunity to see orcas, humpback whales, gray whales, blue whales, the largest animal on Earth. Pretty cool experience. Closer to shore, you're going to see more of those uh, sea lions, or those pinnipeds, um, and maybe a harbor seal or two. When you're on uh, land, you want to look for those terrestrial animals, those unique animals to the islands, like the island of a scrub jay, and also the island fox. Now, these foxes were nearly extinct less than two decades ago. Um, due to the efforts of the Park Service and other partners, um, these, an these animals have made a recovery, though, and they're doing very well. All right, hiking on the island. There are many, many trails to hike on on each of the islands. Some are a little bit more maintained than others. Some have better signage than others. So it's important to know where you're going, have a map, wear your proper clothing and footwear, sun protection, have some snacks, and bring, bring plenty of water. It gets very hot on top of those islands, um, and there's very, very little shade. All right, if you'd like to see the other half of the park, the underwater half, then diving, snorkeling, and swimming are a great opportunity. Um, you can see things like the Garibaldi, which is a bright orange fish. It is our state marine fish. Uh, sheephead are common, kelp bass, and sea stars. So I recommend uh, swimming, snorkeling around those kelp forest areas. That's where you're going to see most of the marine life. Speaking of the kelp forest, if you dive deeper, you can see other animals like the uh, spiny lobster that you see Ranger Kelly here holding. Um, now the kelp forests are very important, not just for our recreation, but also for shelter and food. They provide shelter and food for over a thousand different species of plants and animals. Now, if you'd rather stay dry and stay on top of the water, kayaking is a great way to explore the marine environment. If you are an experienced ocean kayaker, you can bring your own kayak and arrange with island packers to bring it out, or you can rent a kayak and arrange with island packers to bring it out for you. If you are not an experienced kayaker, we, we recommend that you take a guided kayak tour because the weather can change drastically and quickly out there, as can the ocean conditions. Um, so the Channel Islands Adventure Company is our concessionaire. Um, and you can arrange with them to take a guided tour. You'll have a trained guide with you and all the gear you need. Um, and that trained guide has all the knowledge and skills necessary to stay safe. And lastly, boating and sailing is a wonderful way to experience the park. If you um, have your own boat, you can sail around the, the uh, islands. You can use any of the landing docks and piers, so you must anchor offshore. Uh, you can come on shore as well and on the park service land, but you do need a permit if you're going to come ashore on Nature Conservancy land. So 76% of Santa Cruz Island is Nature Conservancy, so make sure that you get a permit from them first. Okay, so we have seen that Channel Islands offers an array of recreational opportunities. You can snorkel in the clear waters of Santa Barbara, hike through the Coriopsis of Anacapa, kayak the sea caves of Santa Cruz, explore the Torrey Pines on Santa Rosa, and watch thousands of pinnipeds on San Miguel. So in this national park, you can fully immerse yourself in an island world that's just miles away from a mainland that's filled with millions of people. So I invite you to come out and experience Channel Islands for your own. And I'd li like you to consider a few questions as we end here. You can share in the chat what you think, or you can just uh, think to yourself. Why do you think national parks are important? And why do you think they should be protected? So I wanna thank you all for your time and I'd like to open it up for questions. Awesome, thank you, thank you, Ranger Bethany. Um, if our chat support could stop sharing the screen at this point, we can get Bethany on there in gallery mode. Let me fix that real quick. And we will get to some of those questions. Um, one of the really good question is, when are the best times to visit the island? Great question. Um, my favorite time is fall um, and summer. Summer is um, a little bit busier. Um, of course, um, 
this year, you know, right now there are no boats going out to the islands. So you have to keep an eye on our website for uh, when the um, islands will be, well, they're, they're open, but keep an eye on uh, when island packers will start running boats again. Um, but fall, September, October is a beautiful time because it's still warm out there and it's still great swimming and snorkeling. Awesome. Another question was, are there any reptiles on the island? Oh, yeah. Great question. Um, yes, there are. It depends on what island. Um, there, on Santa Cruz, there are two different types of snakes. Uh, there is an island gopher snake, as well as a, a yellow-bellied racer snake. Um, Santa Barbara, there is the island night lizard which contrary to its name actually comes out during midday, not, not at night at all. Um, but that lizard only exists on Santa Barbara Island in the park, but also on um, San Clemente Island and San Nicolas Island, which are owned by the Navy. That was another question. Is San Nicolas part of the Channel Islands? Uh, yeah, uh, San, Santa Catalina, San Nicolas, and San Clemente are a part of the Channel Islands chain, but they are not a part of the park. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, another one. How many foxes are there? And is it only one type? Good question. Um, the foxes, each island, so they're on five, or they're on three of the five islands, or actually five of the eight islands, the total islands. Um, but the foxes, each, each island has its own subspecies. They're all a little bit different. Um, and sorry, what was the other part of that question? How many are there? How many? Oh, <laughs> good question. Um, let's see, I did have the numbers on, let's see. Um, so we don't have the 2018 numbers or 2019 numbers yet. Uh, the most recent numbers I have were 2017. Um, on Santa Cruz, we had 3,100 approximately. And then Santa Rosa had about 1,800 and San Miguel had 258. That was 2017 numbers. That's awesome. That's a massive amount. That's really cool. What should we do if a fox approaches and are we worried about them biting us? Good question. Um, you definitely, uh, if you go to Scorpion Anchorage on Santa Cruz, the foxes are more accustomed to people there. Um, so you, they will walk right next to you within a few feet of you and really not even acknowledge you. Uh, if they are approaching you because you have food, it's best to um, stomp and plant and clap uh, to kind of get them to go away. We don't want to uh, make them think it's okay to get close to us or have our food. We want them to be a little bit afraid of us. Um, the other islands, the less um, habited islands by humans, you're going to find um, that the fox is a little bit more skittish than at Scorpion Anchorage. Yeah, so we appreciate everyone doing what they can to keep these animals wild because that's what's going to keep them safe. Super good advice. We have a different question. Uh, are there accessible trails on the island? That's a great question. Um, accessibility on the islands is um, something that our superintendent is working toward. It, it's very the hard part about it is getting off of the boat. Um, oftentimes, uh, well, actually at every island, you have to climb a ladder to get off the, the boat. So Island Packers does um, help people and assist them, make sure people are safe getting onto the islands. Um, but we are working on different things that we could possibly do um, to help the accessibility on the island. So if you guys have any ideas about that, um, please, email us um, at the park um, our email is um it is and now i forgot it it's oh. ch chis at c h i s underscore information at nps.gov i'll definitely put that link in the chat as well Great. on that same yeah. oh, c h i s underscore information at nps.gov i'll type away thank you thank you um on that same note what's your favorite island to hike around on, and which one is the easiest? Okay, great question. Um, I'm kind of partial to Santa Cruz, but they because that's because I spent two summers out there. Um, they are all unique in their own way. Um, 
and hiking Santa Cruz. You have um, beautiful, there's shorter hikes and as well as longer hikes that you can take. Um, on specifically at Scorpion Anchorage, that's Cavern Point. That's a nice short two mile hike. There's Potato Harbor, which is a five mile hike. Um, or you can take a longer hike, which is gonna take you more all day. It's more of a, I think it's close to eight miles. And that's um, Smuggler's Canyon. Uh, Santa Rosa Island, it, again, it depends on if you're visiting for the day or if you're camping. Um, if you're visiting for the day on Santa Rosa, the Cherry Canyon hike is a beautiful hike. Um, but if you're camping, I recommend getting out to those Torrey Pines um, and Lobo Canyon, which is a much longer hike, more like nine miles. Awesome. So you said there's definitely camping on some islands. There is there backpacking, and are there other ways to stay if people don't want to camp? Um, that's a great question. Uh, we camping right now. You have to, you know, you can camp in any of the established campsites. Backpacking Del Norte Campground on Santa Cruz is the only place that you can stay to backpack to. It's about three and a half miles from Prisoners Harbor. Um, pack, uh, hiking up there, you do have to bring your own water to camp, uh, up to Del Norte Campsite. On Santa Rosa, it, there is that beach backcountry camping that is only allow, uh, allowed during August through December. So you need to contact us at the park, call our visitor center. Um, to find out more details about that um, because it does take a lot of planning to do that. Other places to stay, um, currently it's only camping, but they are working on a possibility of on Santa Rosa Island um, having the, the old ranching house there, um, having that as like a maybe a bed and breakfast or something. So I think that that might be in the future um, something that they will be doing. Perfect. Before the bed and breakfast, can you tell us a little bit about the Chumash people or other indigenous groups that might have lived out there? Um, yeah, so the Chumash people lived out on the islands um, and their ancestors for um, at least 13,000 years. The oldest human remains in North America were found on Santa Rosa Island. Um, so there were villages on each of the islands um, except Anacapa and Santa Barbara. They did use those islands, but there were not villages because there was no uh, fresh water springs out there on those two islands. Um, the Chumash people today, the islands are still very important to them and we do work with our tribal partners to make sure that um, we are representing their culture and their history appropriately um, through the park. Um, so yeah, that we have a ton of information on our website about the Chumash. Uh, there's a lot to know about their, their history and culture and we're so happy to work with the Chumash people. Um, sharing that with you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get another good one. A lot of questions about whales. Is there a best time of year and a best place to see them? Oh, that's a great question. Um, yeah, there, the Santa Barbara Channel has a lot of diversity and that's because the cold waters from the north and the warm waters from the south meet right here at the Channel Islands and that well that wells up the water and it brings a lot of nutrients to the surface. So that means there are a lot of animals here to partake in that nutrient rich water. Um, so we do have a lot of um, small and large animals. The blue whales, the gray whales do their migration. Um, I believe they're going in like January, they were going back to war. Um, so I, I have, there's a marine mammal chart that I created. Um, that kind of tells what time of year you're going to see most things. You're going to see dolphins year-round, those sea lions year-round, um, but there are certain times of year that you're going to see more of those orcas and the blue whales and the gray whales. Um, so you can uh, check our website. I'm not sure if we have that marine mammal chart online, um, but that's something if you're interested I can email that to you. Um, you can email us at shiz underscore information and I can email that to you. Can you share that uh, email address one more time and I'll type it in? I'm sorry, C-H. C-H-I-S yep. underscore, and then the word information at yep. N-P-S dot Perfect. Perfect, perfect. We're going to put that in the answer column. You can get there. And for the folks that are asking, yeah, there definitely will be a recording of this that we put up on our website. 
Um, that was a two second break for you, Ranger Bethany. <laughs> uh, we got a couple of questions about scuba diving and snorkeling. Where's the best place, your favorite place, and how close can I get to the sea caves? Um, there is great snorkeling and scuba diving at, on Anacapa Island around there. Um, there are different caves I think you can swim through. I've never, I don't dive yet, um, but I know that Anacapa is a wonderful place to dive um, and snorkel as well as out by Santa Barbara. That one's a little harder to get to, um, but if you are, when Scorpion Anchorage opens up, that is also a great place to scuba um, and snorkel around. Basically, you wanna be in those kelp forest areas, and that's where you're gonna see most of that marine life. So, uh, we got a couple questions on when did Channel Islands become a national park, and how many people go every year? Oh, good question. Um, Hit you with the, the number questions. Yeah, yeah, number. <laughs> um, well, the, I mean, March 5th, 1980 is when it became a national park. Um, the number questions, that one, I, I don't remember our numbers specifically. I believe it's around 20,000 visitors to the islands um, in recent years. Um, but those numbers actually are available online um, if you just Google how many people visited Channel Islands, uh, I believe that information is publicly available. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, that's another good one. We'll repost that link to the NPS Channel Islands website, which got a whole bunch of super good information, but mm -hmm. someone is being very persistent about salamanders. Are there salamanders, salamanders on the island? Um, you know, there, there are, and I don't know a lot about them. Uh, unfortunately, that's not something I've um, studied a lot on, but um, yeah, check out our, our website because they're I'm pretty sure there are salamanders. Yeah, and I think that's because I don't, when I was out on Santa Cruz, I didn't see them much. I saw alligator lizards, um, western fence lizards, um, common side blotch lizards, um, but the salamanders, I believe, are, are, were more on the Nature Conservancy side because they had more of those year-round springs on that side of the island. Got it. That was a good. That was a good salamander question. That's good. Yeah, great question. <laughs> I need to learn the answer to. <laughs> you can't know everything. Um, and again, that National Park website is good. I'll go get that link right now for us all. Um, you got time for a few more questions, Bethany? Of course. Perfect, let's do a couple more in, what was a good one? Oh, this is testing your history knowledge. Um, were the Channel Islands ever connected to the mainland? Um, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, they were not. During the last ice age, uh, which was about 13,000 years ago, the islands, the four northern islands, so that would be San Miguel, Santa Rosa, Santa Cruz, and Anacapa. They were all connected as one large island. The name of this island was Santa Rosé. So when during this ice age, the this Santa Rosé was closer to the mainland because actually the, the mainland was um, further out to the ocean as well. Um, so it was only about five miles from the mainland, um, but they were never connected at any point. So there's always that barrier. But animals did make their way out. Um, they think that's when the Colombian mammoths um, may have swam out to the islands, um, which eventually evolved, adapt, adapted over time to become the pygmy mammoths. Um, and, and I think that they're doing a program on pygmy mammoths. Um, my colleague, Ranger Monique, will be doing a program uh, in June, I believe, on pygmy mammoths. So if you're interested in that, um, hop on to that program. Bingo, let's do one more question. A fun one, has a tsunami ever hit any of the islands? Um, you know, I, I haven't heard about it hitting the islands, but I do remember reading about a tsunami uh, or people talking about a possible tsunami and I can't remember when that was. Um, so I think that it might have happened a long time ago, like, I think it was early 1900s, I, I, but I don't remember. I don't have any information specifically about a tsunami hitting the islands. 
Got it. Well, we can, uh, we will go ahead and do some more homework as we pasted that NPS website in the chat as well as in the question and answer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share our links one more time in that Q&A. Otherwise, I want to be super respectful of your time, Bethany. So thank you for, for spending time with us for the presentation and for answering all our good questions. Of course. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming tonight. And please tune in uh, for our other programs here. And, uh, Chris, Ranger, Junior Ranger Chris and Junior Ranger Tim are putting on. Bingo. Yeah. So you can find out more about those events um, on our CSUN Facebook page at CSUN Outdoor Adventures. Um, and we've recently moved to an Eventbrite page, which I'll go ahead and paste in the question and answers if that's easier for folks to copy and paste. Otherwise, thank you, thank you all for coming out and spending some time. We'll put this recording up on our website and we will see you Thursday at noon for a Ranger Talk on Grand Tetons National Park, which will be super exciting. Cool. So thank you all for coming out and have a really good rest of your day. Bye, everyone. Thank you.